how forcible are right words. The word of God in the mouth of his messenger is power. Somebody said God will make you. As you listen to God's anointed messenger, Pastor Cornelius Homner, get set to be launched into a realm of all realm possibilities. one more time you're welcome to the month of march 2022 can you help me walk up to five six places around you and just tell them happy new month happy new month happy new month happy new month can you tell the person i'm still full of his glory it is still my season of rising it is still my season of shining it is still my season of supernatural enlargement can you prophesy that to six persons quickly it's still my, I am still full of his glory, and it is still my season of rising. It is still my season of shining. It is still my season of supernatural enlargement. Come on, are you saying that to six persons? Are you sure you have prophesied that to six persons? Okay. Six is not English language again, Abby. <laughs> you preach to one person and sat down. I'm still full of his glory. I'm still rising. I'm shining. And there is supernatural enlargement everywhere. I am full of his glory. I'm rising. I'm shining. And there is supernatural enlargement everywhere. Hallelujah. Have, have you done prophesying to the six persons? Now prophesy to yourself finally. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on the word always. And don't let it go out of your sight. He said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy what? Mouth. You see that? But you shall do what? Meditate in it day and night. And then align yourself to do according to that which is saying. Then you will make your way prosperous. You will have good success. So you meditate in your heart. You declare with your mouth. You keep it always before you. It will not depart out of your sight continually. Then it will bring results to you. Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. Finally, my brethren. You see? Anytime Paul is writing a letter and he says, finally. If you have read the epistles of Paul. He wrote to Timothy, he came to point, he said, finally. Whenever I said finally, the next thing Paul usually said, it doesn't look as if it's finally. He will still say many things, but very, very important things. So he wrote a letter to the Ephesian church by the Spirit of God. And when he was rounding up, because Ephesians ended in chapter 6, he said, finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might next verse don't forget to finally this is the most important thing i want to tell you i've told you before the final words of a man before he lives or before he dies are very important amen if you are you are you're, you're a man that travels often anytime you are leaving the family and you are traveling you want to give some final instruction, do this, do this, do this, this, this should be done before I return. Is that not so? Those things are very important. They are always very important. 
not to talk of a person who is writing a final message. This is the last thing he has to say. Anything he says, very important. The people that hang around those people at the last in, in their last days always hear the most important things. They hold the, the greatest secrets because at that final hour, anything he can't talk carelessly. Amen. Very important things will come out. He said, "Put on the whole armor of God." Finally, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. <laughs> against the wise of the devil that is you are a christian you are a believer but there is something called armor and it's not one the whole armor put on the whole armor so you will be able to stand in other words what is going to make you to stand is how well you put on the armor then he goes further to say because there is war tell your neighbor there is war you didn't say to us, say there is war. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. <laughs> Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Everybody say evil day. They can say evil day. We are in a war and the Bible is talking about evil day. The evil day is not the devil that is going to orchestrate it in the agenda of God in the end times. There is a day called evil day. Amen. And that's the day when the attacks and the onslaught of the devil will be at his peak. He said, to be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to do what? Having done all, to do what? Having done all, to do what? To stand. Hmm. I'm saying a lot of things ahead. We're in a race. We're in a battle. People finish in different ways. There are some, they finish the race, but broken bones, they're on the ground. They're on the floor. They crawl to finish. Amen. But there are those who stand to finish. The Bible is saying that to be able to stand, therefore, to stand, having done all, you should do what? Stand. How are you going to do that? Stand, therefore, having your loins, get about with truth. He's giving you the weapons now. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right? And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fairy dust of the wicked. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Hallelujah. So, through this month, we are looking at weapons of warfare. And I, I really want you to be very, very prepared with your spirit because it will be more of teachings. Hallelujah. I want us to dig around this subject very, very strongly. And I see you entering the kind of victory you have never seen in your entire life. You will step into the kind of victory you have never seen in your entire life. So let's introduce it this first service of the month by looking at the spirituality of the war. The spirituality of what? Of the war. The spirituality of the war. The Bible says in verse 12 that we read, we wrestle not against flesh and blood it simply means that the wrestling that we are engaged in is not with physical people okay physical entities we wrestle not against flesh and blood we are not engaged in a battle with the physical there's a translation that says we are dealing with bodiless personalities. Amen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood.
blood. The Bible says that we should put on the whole armor so that we'll be able to withstand what? The wise. We can stand the wise of the devil. Wise, the word wise means deception. It means tricks. Amen. It means gimmicks. It means manipulation. It means funny operations of the devil. And what the Bible is saying there is that in this time that we are in, the devil is launching attacks via different all manner of manipulations that we'll see shortly. Hallelujah. And before you will be able to withstand it, you must be ready to put on the whole armor. Hallelujah. To stand against the wise of the devil, the tricks of the devil. Inefficiency in your armor, that is the weapons. If your weapons are not in order and in place, then you become susceptible to the devil's wiles, the devil's tricks, the devil's demonic operations. Hallelujah. Now, I want to share a brief story with you that will help you to maybe gain a little understanding of what the whole armor means and what we mean by the spirituality of the war. Many years ago, there is a story. It happened um, in the Greek, um, um, among the, the Greeks, of a man by name Hector. Amen. I'm sure you have heard that story a little bit from the... Um, the, 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 how do we call it? the kingdom called Troy. We had Hector, and Hector was a very strong man. He was a prince, the son of the king, and very, very powerful. Hector had a brother by name Paris. Paris was a weakling. <laughs> he wasn't strong. <laughs> Amen. But he was a son. On the other hand, there was another young man by name Achilles. And Achilles was a very strong man. Hector was strong, but Achilles was stronger. What made Achilles stronger, I will explain shortly. Hallelujah. As they grew, Achilles never lost a battle. Hector too never lost a battle. Along the line, somebody fell in love. <laughs> the weak boy fell in love, Paris. And he fell in love with the wife of the king from another kingdom who was elderly so in the midst of playing young boy love he eloped with the girl and escaped and carried her to his own kingdom and that caused a big war it's not just a story it's, it's history all right that caused a very big war that lady he carried caused damages beyond repairs because when the king saw that he could not go and face that land because of Hector, he felt what demanded for his girl, and Paris was not ready to release the girl. So this man contacted Achilles. Achilles was a warrior. Anytime he comes into a battle, the matter is ended. Of course, they got to the land, and Achilles and Hector knew themselves. Very close guys, good guys. They respected themselves because they were the strongest. But now... The king said the only way he was going to pardon that land was that Paris must die. That is the younger brother of Hector. And Hector said, no way. This one cannot, cannot die. Long story made short, when they got there at the point of giving his brother to be killed, as the king lifted up his sword to slaughter the brother, Hector could not stand it. So Hector threw his spear and killed the king. And so the war broke out. And it was terrific. At the end of the day, Hector and Achilles had to fight face to face, and Hector was killed. Achilles killed Hector, that is the elder brother of the one that carried the woman. <laughs> Amen. And the battle was almost over. When Hector was dead, the thing would be over. But here was um, Paris holding arrow, uh, bow and arrow facing Achilles. Achilles said, look at you small boy, I'll finish your brother now. <laughs> you, you are here and just trying to take a step and this guy was afraid and mistakenly released the arrow now nobody has ever seen anything penetrate the body of Achilles but when he released that arrow by that that arrow by mistake the arrow went straight to his heels and as he entered his heels he screamed and the whole war stopped all the fight stopped because nobody has ever heard Achilles scream. And with that arrow on his leg, he knelt down and died. 
So there's normal uh, an English um um so I call it geomatic expression that says Achilles heels, meaning the weak point of a man. All right. Now, why did Achilles kill Hector? Because Hector was operating from the natural realm, he was strong. But Achilles had a mother that was dedicated to a goddess or to a god. So when this boy was born, this woman did incantations and took the baby and dipped the baby into a boy, big bowl of boiling drum of boiling incantation water to liquid. Put the baby in completely and did incantations. Everywhere that water touched, when nobody would be able, be able to kill Achilles through that part. Nothing can enter it. Unfortunately, you have to hold the leg of the child with the two hands to dip the child in the water. So where she held the legs, the water did not touch. And nobody ever knew that that was his secret. The secret of that man was spiritual. So when you are fighting Achilles, you thought you are fighting a natural man, you don't understand that the war is actually spiritual. Hallelujah. And if you don't understand that it's spiritual, you will use all your energy, all your power, all your force, yet you'll be defeated again and again and again and again and again until you discover the nature of the war. All right? And you begin to handle the war from the perspective of what the war is. There is no way you'll be able to win the war. You might be firing and firing and firing and the problem is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because you don't understand the nature of the war. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible now tells us that put on the whole armor. If we use this young man I just spoke about, for example, he had the armor on him. It was just somewhere that was open. The hills. And that place that was open became his undoing. Now, listen to me. When the devil fires, he doesn't fire where the armor is. No way. He never fires where the armor is. The devil is always looking for the Achilles heels. Are you hearing me? And in the realm of the spirit, in the physical, nobody may know where that is. But in the realm of the spirit, when you put on armor in the realm of the spirit, men who are spiritual and those who are in the spirit realm can see the place that is open. Can see the place that can easily be accessed. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. Because the battle that we are engaged in are not physical battles, hallelujah. There is a spirituality tone that is attached to the battles. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. There is something spiritual about the battle, amen, that when you are viewed in the realm of the spirit and the armor we are going to be talking about throughout this month, the armor, both the defensive armor and the offensive armor, will be breaking them down, all of them, amen. The armor is not in place and you are checked and the devil can see a spot. That spot is more than enough. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I've come to announce to you we're in a season of warfare. People are crashing everywhere. To the left, to the right. People who you think are strong are crashing. People you felt can never go down. They are going down. Amen. Some are struck physically dead. Some are struck spiritually, they become useless. But one way or the other, people are going down here and there, here and there, here and there. Somebody may not even be accessed by maybe his own is not a character weakness or something like that. But the devil was able to find a way to strike him down physically. So the boy is a good boy, the man is a good man, he's anointed, he's doing well. Yet, fear is gone. News was flying everywhere days ago of an Igala young man. Amen. I've forgotten the name. OJ something. That is a, it deals with footwears. Footwears. He's in Abuja here. He did so well that he's, he's the one supplying Osibanjo. Young man. Vibrant young man. He slept. He didn't wake up. Very young. He slept. He didn't wake up. The news went everywhere. Osibanjo had to send condolences. With that young, vibrant man. He won't be up to 35, 36 young man he was coming up and somebody wrote and said is it that somebody great cannot come out from this side of the world why is something always cutting them short amen, amen. beloved i've come to tell you that there is a spirituality tone of the war amen. amen the war is spiritual are you hearing me the war is what the war is spiritual and 
It's my prayer. Amen. Just pick it and hold it there. And it's my prayer that God will open your eyes to understand in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, and when we are talking like this, the war is spiritual. Many of you, what will begin to come to your mind is witches and wizards. May I announce to you that those are the lowest level of operation of Satan's wickedness. Hallelujah. The lowest level. Can I tell you, you don't need witches and wizards before you enter warfare. Amen. If you read that Ephesians 6, 10, okay, verse 12, because of time that we read, the Bible tells us that Satan has an army. And the army of the devil is well structured. Huh? There is hierarchy in the realm of the spirits in their kingdom. They don't break their ranks. He said, number one, principalities. That is, is listening to you the various rankings of the devil. We are principalities, they are what? Powers, they are rulers of the darkness of this world and their spiritual wickedness in what? In high places. Principalities means authority over territories. We will look at that in the course of the month. But do you know that Daniel went into 21 days of prayer and fasting? in order to secure an answer from God and an angel came after 21 days and said from the day that you prayed we heard you an answer have been sent and I came to deliver the answer he said that the prince of Persia we stood me in the air now he's talking about the prince of Persia we stand him in the air meanwhile Persia is a kingdom in the physical so how did the prince of Persia we stand in the air meaning for every physical territory there's a spiritual rulership it was not the physical prince that withstood the angel. Where would the physical prince him? It was the demonic principality, the principality over that particular sphere of Persia, the spiritual one that fought the spiritual battle. So, may, while you are having physical presidents, there are spiritual territorial presidents. And if they are not overthrown and kicked out, does not matter what you say about the physical one, anybody that gets to that seat will become like that. Amen. Anybody? The prince of Persia withstood me. So he's talking about principalities. You know who a principal is? It's the authority over a particular secondary school. It's a principal. So in the same way, in the realm of the spirit, when you have a territory, there are principals. But because them principalities and powers, they are authorities. But it was for us to talk about the rulers of darkness of this world. That is, there is a darkness realm as far as this world is concerned. And there are assigned rulers that rule the realm of darkness of this world. They are there. Amen. Somewhere along the line, you can find witches and wizards somewhere along those lines. <laughs> they are just somewhere there. But they are rulers of darkness of this world. The physical things you see going wrong, they are the spiritual reason for it. I will take my time to teach. I won't rush it. Anywhere we stop, in any service we stop. Hallelujah. Then he talks about what? Spiritual wickedness in where? Uh, those ones are not, they, they, are, they are demons, raw evil spirits. Remember the Bible talk about the man that was demon possessed and was free. And then he went and did not ensure that he was, the, the spirit of God dwelt in him. So the, the other demon came back to check. And when that demon saw that, this guy is not so what did he do he went and brought more what wicked than he I, mean, I, I will not have the time to go deep into that explanation but this guy happens it is the principality that takes the territory then opens it to others to come in so what happened in that place was that the principality, that one that you saw there it was the principality is in charge but he opened it and went to bring spiritual wickedness in high places to come and take over his own is to secure the territory and then he, are, he now invites wicked forces to come and take it over. Amen. The devil, is he has that rank. Praise God. And listen to me. They, they influence situations, influence circumstances, influence everything. Listen, the warfare we fight, you may never see Satan stand in front of you one day and say, I'm the one resisting you. But you just know that there's a resistance against your life. You just know that something is wrong. 
Somebody will wake up in the morning and say, ah, feed a pain here. Yeah. And the next five, ten years is growing. The thing is growing. How the pain came is not aware. Amen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I'm not saying all this to scare you, but so that you can understand the nature of the war. One of the first way to win your battle, first strategy to win the battle, is to know your enemy. Look, you have to know your enemy. That's why the Bible says we are not ignorant of what? The devices of the wicked, the enemy. We are not ignorant of his devices. Can I have um amplified version Ephesians 6 verse 12 only before I move from there? Are you hearing anything at all tonight? Ephesians 6 verse 12. Okay, look up everybody. Can we all read one to go? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. That's what the wrestling is about. Now, I just want to show some scriptures that will help you to understand that this thing is a spiritual affair. In the book of Joshua chapter 7, Joshua chapter 7, we have a very interesting story there. That story, I will start it from Joshua chapter 6, is a story of the conquering of Jericho. Do you remember Jericho? Jericho was a very big land, big walls, and the Bible said that Joshua led the children of God to march around it seven days, they screamed, and the thing came down and they won. Very, the, the situation was difficult, but they won. And they won easily. Now, in Joshua chapter 7, amen, just let me keep them, please. The fan is interrupting me. Now, in Joshua chapter 7, verse 1 to 6, put it on the screen, please. L let me see how quick I can be. In Joshua chapter 7, verse 1 to 6, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in their costing. Follow me carefully. In Joshua chapter 6, the wall of Jericho came down flat. All right? And it was a very difficult nation, yet it came down. But in this situation, now, the Bible started by saying that they committed a trespass in the accosting, meaning they committed an offense that caused um, a loophole in their armor of defense. There was, there was something that had gone wrong in the spirit realm. In the physical, they looked normal, but in the spiritual, something had gone wrong. So the Bible said, and the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, and all that, he took a cursing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Verse 2. Now, Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, Ai, which is beside Bethaven, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go and view the country. And the men went and viewed it. Look at their report. Verse, verse 3. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go and smite Ai. And let not all the people labor, for there are few. So the physical situation of that nation was nothing to write to my back. Ordinarily, they should just go and capture the nation. All right? So they went up feeder of the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. So, and the men of Ai, smote of them, about 36 men for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebarim and smote them in the going down wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water <sighs> what happened and Joshua tore his clothes fell to the ground upon his face upon the ground on uh, before the ark of the Lord until the evening it was in fasting he and the elders said, put dust on his head I said what kind of thing is this oh Joshua said alas oh Lord where wherefore have you brought these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us with God that we, we are content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan he was talking no matter rubbish oh Lord what shall I say when Israel turned their backs before their enemies and for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land we hear of it and shall invite us around and cut off her name from the earth. Go to verse 10. Verse 10. And the Lord said to Joshua, Oga, get up. Wherefore are you lying down upon your face? What's the problem? Verse 11. Israel has sinned and they have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. 
for they have even taken of their cousin and have also stolen and disembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff so they took something that was wrong added it to their own and the bible said the next verse verse 13 verse 13 please up sanctify the people and say sanctify yourselves against tomorrow for thus said the lord god there is an accosting in the midst of thee who is it you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away their costing. Do you understand what we are talking about? The enemies are on them. I would think that you should go and train more and learn how to fight more so you can come and win. But God is saying it is not a matter of going to train more physically that this is a spiritual matter. There is something in your life spiritually, there is something that is wrong with your life that if it is not taken away, you can't stand before your enemies. It's called the accosting. Something has been introduced into your life that needs to be taken care of. And if it's not taken care of, it does not matter how many tongues you are speaking, you will not be able to stand before your enemies. Amen. Do you know that there was something that happened to Saul that made him not to stand before Goliath? Before, if Goliath stood up, Saul would stand up and slaughter him. But you remember that Saul had allowed something to enter his life, competition, strife, and all that, and he wanted to, to he was, he was, he was just operating in a disobedient manner, and so there was a loophole on his armor. When Goliath screamed, even Saul, one thing about Saul is that Saul was a man that was spiritually conscious. He knew that, forget, I will not use both face and fight this thing and die for nothing. The Bible says he, he, he stayed in the tent. He always said, give me one man that will fight. Saul said, for where? It's me that will come and die. Me, myself, I'm aware that the things that will make me to face so I don't have them. Amen. David came. And when David came, he was the man that stood. Not just because he was a small boy or because God just wanted only him to stand, but because he was the only one qualified to stand. God has checked the other military men, including his elder brothers, and said, I have refused him. What made God to refuse the elder brothers? Refuse Eliab, refuse Shama. What made God to refuse them? He said, I found David, a man after my heart. How do you know he's a man after your heart? In the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. So the battles were able to withstand and conquer is as a result of <laughs> how we understand that this thing is a spiritual affair. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual affair. Taking territories, for example, it is not by thank God for evangelism, thank God for, for, for a lot of things that are done, but it's, it's, there is a dimension of disposition you have with God, amen, that gates open, they just open. Lift up your hands, so you get and be ye lift up, you everlasting doors. He said, Who are you? Who is this king of glory? That the king of women, who is this king of glory? He said, The Lord, what? Strong and mighty, the Lord, what? Oh, let's read the entire of that, that scripture. Give me Psalm 24. Let's read it from verse 1 so you can understand where the whole thing started from and where it, it led to. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Verse 2. For he has fallen upon the seas and established it upon the floors. Verse 3. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has what? Okay, do your hand like this. How do you know a man's hand is clean? Now, don't tell me. Look at it physically. Do you know a person's hand is clean? It can only be checked spiritually. And the things you do that you think nobody knows in the spirit realm, there is no secret. So it, the, the spirit realm is aware, fully aware. The things you do, you feel nobody is aware. I'm doing it secret. I'm hiding. I'm doing it. Nobody is aware. Papa didn't see me. Mama didn't see me. Sasa didn't see me. Boya didn't see me. Nobody saw me. Forget it. Everybody saw you in the spirit realm. Everybody. The signal was strong in the realm of the spirit. He that has clean hands and what? What do you use to measure a man's the purity of a man's heart? We'll come back there. He said, the press plate of righteousness. I'm not teaching on that yet tonight. 
who has not lifted up his soul to vanity nor sworn deceitfully verse 5 he said that is the man that shall receive the blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation verse 6 this is the generation of them that seek him that seek thy face oh jacob then he moved to the next verse said lift up your heads amen so the lifting up of the head is tied to the 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 fullness of the armor are you hearing me at all tonight nothing happened let nobody deceive you there is nothing automatic is it in this kingdom amen. Amen, amen, amen everything happens for a reason there is always a reason behind anything happening and there is a way to position to get some things done and listen god is no respect of persons god is no respecter of persons god is no respecter of persons look at another story you understand better what about something look at this guy the way oh jesus Judges chapter 16 verse 20 to 24 Judges 16 20 24 you know Samson was a very strong guy they had tried always to bring him down they couldn't bring him down but in Judges chapter 16 verse 20 Delilah was able to get him down the Bible said from verse 20 of Judges chapter 16 Judges 16 20 please let me have it quickly oh and she said the Philistines be upon you something he woke i woke out of his sleep and said i will go out as at other times before and i will shake myself and he did not know that the presence of god was what the lord was departed from him now the next one but the philistines took him put out his eyes and brought him down to gaza bound him with fetters of brass and he grind in the prison house but look at what caught my attention there i'll be the hell of his head began to grow again after i was saving restoration but look at verse 23 this is what caught my attention after they caught him then the lords of the philistines gathered them together to do what to offer a great sacrifice to who dagon their god and to rejoice for they said our god deliver something our enemy to one i want to ask a question was he not his head at the bab why are you now saying our god deliver him next verse verse 24 and when the people saw him not just the philistines now when the people not just they lost the whole people they praised their guy for they said our god has delivered into our hands our enemy and they destroyed of our country we slew many of us the people said praise our god the lost of leaders said praise our god dagon what does that mean it means that everything they were doing physically to get something there was a spiritual one that turned to it it means something picture was on the altar of their god he wasn't aware something was busy doing yeah 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 his name was on the altar so when they it's like you have a prayer request and you got the answer you came for thanksgiving is it not like that you do thanksgiving for what you have asked for so then the whole country had in, done incantations against samson but the young man was busy jumping from here to there jumping from here to there, not knowing that his name was on an altar now listen to me the spell that made him to tell delilah the secret was a spell that came from that altar what is your secret samson will never tell you his secret for where the secret that will make you to kill him to make the matter worse the girl did it three four times say what's your secret say um if you tie my hand with new rope that's it she bought they bought new rope tied it he scattered it and when he was capturing it she said the philistines are there and the philistines were there she scattered it normal man we say ah i told you secrets and people were here already to catch me yo you are a devil and kill him but they spare the incantation from the altar blinded him now all this why that he was jumping from woman to woman it was the incantation on the altar that was sponsoring his activities without knowing are you hearing me because he was thinking that his battle was against the philistine physical physicians and uh, philistines why the philistines were doing incantation so that even his own character begins to fight him but he wasn't aware they began to sponsor it sponsor it sponsor that thing until it crashed him and brought him down 
Amen. And the only reason why it brought him down was because he himself was not aware of the nature of the war. And so there was a loophole in his armory. There was a loophole in his armor. There was something that was wrong with Samson's armor. And that was why they could enter. Listen, what I'm saying is that it is not their incantation that is the matter. They will always do incantation. The, the issue is that when the incantation comes and there is a, a loophole that is left somewhere, then the incantation will find a way to express itself. That's why people that seem great can crash suddenly. Can you pray for just 10 seconds? 10 seconds. Hush. Open my eyes to identify the loophole that needs to be covered. Are you praying? 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 I am a semini. Ide body amana superi ende rebo sana mani anada bosi rebo. Eka mende le barano si ede brahande le bredi ano sana mayande. Liko to baradi ya kinde le bredo si he. Indo brodo si teke di bredi se di breke to li bre inda sadabro ni ana masandi ya. Aida di dosa di ada da bolo sa de bredi ya la ba dosa na mayana. Kai. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. You have to understand the spirituality of this war. You have to understand it, sir. You have to understand it, sir. You have to understand it, sir. Aye. They were doing incantation. And something was just normal. Moving about. I'm anointed. Anytime they come against me physically, the power will come. I will destroy them. He didn't know that this thing is beyond the physical. It's beyond the physical. It's far beyond the physical. So, there was a president of this nation many years ago, head of state, that if it were to be physical, nobody can name him to kill him. It, to kill him, they had to go beyond the physical. He, was, he had all the security physically, but <laughs> he didn't know the nature they took it to. And <laughs> he was eliminated. Amen. The prayer I was praying why God was giving me this word is, Lord, may I not be so careless to come to a point of weakness and papa my weakness until the devil passes through it to strike. Listen, that weakness you are pampering today, it becomes a graveyard of tomorrow. I told you, the, the things that God wants us to look into this month are strong things. Amen. But it will bring you to a realm of victory that you have never had in your life before. Can you pray again on that 10 seconds? Can you pray that prayer? Help me not to pamper weakness unto disaster. Unto destruction. Unto disaster. Help me. Ayano seke barane no saminaya. E no siye bari era mano siye barana busa. E kabana masete beri andeli koso pregede de balara su de rebedi. Lembrane su se preke tolibra. Somebody spray. Somebody spray. Somebody spray. Abidi e kute beri e tamani ne mosane menia. E kade pedi de le balosi te baloko to mine ni ma aye. A kwa twa la twa re kwa zwa le twa ni na ma kwa zwa la ti na na no to se ne ne ya. Aya. I could do banani la barato se de bede shadaba hide shadaba. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. If you look at what happened between David and Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17, it will amaze you. Goliath stood and shouted, give me a man that will fight me. And if he can win me, then we become your servants. And for 40 days, nobody could come out. When David came, he said, I'm going to fight this guy. And David faced him. Look at the discussion that happened between them. The Bible said, Goliath cursed David. Give, give me 1 Samuel chapter 17. I, I want us to really see it. Let's take it from verse, can you start from verse 30, 31? Look at the way they battle. I thought these guys were fighting physically. I thought it was spear against spear. I thought it was knife against sling. But he turned him from under and spoke after I said, man, go to verse 35. I'm trying to beat time. Verse 35. 
He said, and I went after him and asked, okay, I might get down to verse 40. I think we are getting closer. Verse 40. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. And he took, in his, he, he took his staff in his hand and chose him five small stones and out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even in his grip, and his sling was in the hand, and he drew near the Philistine. Verse 41. Look at what The Philistine came to the, and drew unto David, and the man that bought the sheep went before him. Verse 42. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was a youth, ruddy, and of a fair countenance. Verse 43. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you are coming to me with sticks, staves? And the Philistine crossed David by his gods. So there was an enchantment dimension of the battle. It was not spear and catapult. He looked at David and said, This boy. So they, he cast him by his ghost. That is, he's releasing a spell. And if the spell will work, then the man is dead. That was why the person that would be qualified to stand before Goliath, God would have to ensure it's somebody whose armor was complete. Because it was not a matter of the weapon you were holding in your hand. There is something about Goliath. Goliath was a man who was operating from a diabolic realm. He cursed David by his ghost. David said, okay. This thing is not physical. Then David responded, give me the next verse, please. Quickly, first summer. Then said David to the Philistines, give, give me the next verse. verse. I think I was in verse. Then said David to the Philistines, okay, you come against me. Oh, please, can you go to verse 45, please? You come against me with a sword and with a spear. With it. How do I come against you? I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. So you see that the battle has shifted from the physical purely to the spiritual realm. You can now explain why a stone will crash a, a giant. Because it was not a physical battle that happened that day. You are looking at your physical eyes and seeing stone and spear. But in the realm of the spirit, something else was happening. Something else was happening. Kai. My prayer is that no one here will become a casualty. I said no one here will become a casualty. Again, I said no one here will become a casualty. If you believe that, let your amen be loudest. I want you to pray one prayer in a minute. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's weapons of warfare we are talking about. See, every satanic programming, you know what programming is? Uh, when you program something, then if it happens, it just flows. It just flows. They, they set and program something. You just press the code. So something was jumping from woman to woman to woman. The thing that will finish him was already programmed into him. Say, Father, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, anything programmed into my life to destroy me, be set on fire. Pray like a warrior. That is not just an ordinary prayer. Anything that has been programmed into my life in order to destroy me, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Something is finally down. That after many years, he's finally on the floor. We tried everything and finally our incantation got him. We tried physically. We, 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 we went spiritual and we got him. How can they throw a party to rejoice? Know that the great destiny has crashed. How can they? You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. I don't know how you want to cry that cry. The devil will not rejoice over my destiny. After all the praying in tongues, after all the fasting, after coming to church, the devil is fire. The enemy will not rejoice over this commission. Satan and his cohorts will not rejoice over my life. They will not rejoice over my family. They will not rejoice over this commission. The devil will never rejoice over my life. The devil will never rejoice over my family. The devil will never rejoice over this commission. Arakaya barata shalaya. Ayada barakai kosani waigre. Ayada beki dalabaiswa. Ayada beki dolabaiswa. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, of Amen. Just sit down with me. Hey, God, I'm awesome. Oh, my life, oh, over my life, oh Yahweh, let only you be seen, let only you be prayed, Aya. over my life, oh Yahweh, over my life, oh Yahweh, let only you be praised, oh, let only you be praised, oh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Let only you be praised. Let only you be praised, oh Yahweh. Oh Yahweh. Kalamanosha, Yahweh. Let only you be praised, oh. Let only you be praised. Take that one more time. Over my life, over my life, oh, 
over my family. Consolidate it. Israel moved out of Egypt a great number. Everybody was afraid of them. But there was one king that wanted to find them. His name was Balak. I thought Balak was going to stand up and begin to fight them physically. Balak went to meet a name by a man by name Balaam and said, there is a people they are great, they are multiplying, they are spreading. Come and curse them for me so I can prevail. Because if a spiritual curse has not gone ahead, I cannot prevail. You know as you are spreading and you are growing, as you are, you are marrying and having children, as ministries begin to make sense, it's not time to relax. The spread is provocative. The increase is provocative. Satan doesn't like anything that is happening good. Do you understand? That when you get that new job, and when that brother comes and says, I am feeling like that it's you that God wants me to marry. Do you know that the moment that begins to happen, that good thing sends a signal. Satan came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He does not want anything good. So it is a provocative thing. So he said, come and curse them. Come and curse them for me. So that... I can prevail over them. But when Balaam came, he tried to curse. For where? Why? Because their armory was complete. 
I, I wish the story had ended like that. But it didn't end like that. Look at what happened. In Numbers chapter 23 verse 1 to 3. They said come and curse the people. And this man was raising altars. Numbers 23 verse 1 to 3. The Bible said this guy raised. Verse 1 to 2 quickly. Numbers 23. I'm just jumping. Balaam said to build me here seven altars. Prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. These guys were living their life normal. Somebody was raising seven altars to bring them down. Don't look at me and say, Pastor, I don't know why my life is moving forward. Beloved, it takes a fight. In verse, if you move from there, you look at verse 13 to 15. Altars, seven altars were raised again. When you move from there, 27 to 30, another altar was raised again. Ah, so 21 altars were raised against Israel. It didn't work because these guys were in order. Unfortunately, in Numbers chapter 25, I want to show you something. May your eyes see this. May your eyes see it well. In Numbers chapter 25, verse 1, just immediately after that, the Bible said, Israel abode in shitting. The people began to commit wardom with the daughters of Moab. So, they went into fornication and immorality. They were sleeping with the daughters. They were, there was an association that was no longer correct there was a mingling and you will be thinking that oh these guys are mingling like that just naturally or you are thinking that okay maybe it's just that the girls are too beautiful and they cannot withstand the girls but the bible said when they began to that what did it? they call the people to sacrifices of their gods so it was a deliberate calculation they put some very beautiful lanky coordinated girls and said just go pointed nose figure eight just go into the camp i believe they did incantation on those girls so that anybody that sees them there will be an aroma of the demonic spirit that he cannot with the agreement notice that there are some devils devil incarnate girls that when they pass you don't understand and they look at you you just know there is something there is something different about the girl that it takes speaking in tongues to break off and say that devil is a bastard those are people that they when we have agents of god there are agents of satan they have been cooked they have been wired for the assignment so they were projected into the camp and the two children of israel were careless these guys that the cross of balaam could not bring them down these guys that the all manner of altars could not bring them down lanky lanky girls were sent but what i want you to see that even the coming of the girls was not physical it was projected it was projected the bible speaking about how they came because you'll be think that and when they came and they began to touch them and give them food to eat they began to drag them to their gods what was the agenda perforate their armory perforate it so we can strike we cannot strike until something there is an opening i just pray god open your eyes to see what you are hearing to do don't just hear it see what you are hearing see what you are hearing something was perforated at that point but the bible said this was how it came about in the book of revelations in the book of revelations and we look at 2 14 revelations chapter 2 verse 14 you will see what happened Balaam was a man that understood spiritual things. Every time he tried to cross, the cross will not go. He said, their armor is complete. Balaam introduced himself. He said, I'm the prophet. I'm the man that sees with my eyes open. So, he was a seer. And he said, this armor is complete. So, this is what he said. I have a few things against thee because you have there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Look at, what did Balaam do? He taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. So when this guy saw this thing was not going, he said, see, come, come, this thing is beyond physical. Sit down here, let me teach you how to get them. Let me teach you how to penetrate. If their armor can be perforated, we will get them. So arrange girls, arrange fornication, arrange, and the moment it was perforated, in one day, one day, sir, over about a hundred thousand, one hundred and eighty, it, it is, ah, uh, one, twenty-one thousand died on the spot because the armor was perforated. 
I want to be a Christian in complete armor. You fire here, no way. Fire here, no way. Fire here, no way. Fire here, no way. No Achilles heels. That's why the Bible says, put on the whole. Don't leave anyone. One, none is more important than the other. Don't leave anyone. Put on the whole. Men who are in the battle. We are in the battle. Put on the whole. Let me close by saying this for tonight. The devil has, I told you, in the realm of the spirit, nothing is open, nothing is hidden, sorry. The devil has sensitivity. The moment an announcement happens on your life, it's not only heaven that heard it. Satan also heard it. This is my son in whom I well please. Who appeared in the wilderness next? Satan. That's the next person that appeared. Do, have you asked yourself? Peter was moving about and Jesus looked at him and said, Ah, 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 ah. Simon, Simon. Satan has desired to have you. That I might sift you as wheat. What do you know was that Peter denied Jesus three times. But what Jesus knew was that the denier was not physical. That's why I told him, pray so that you will not enter this temptation I am seeing coming. Pray. Peter said, no way. I can never deny you. He said, I know you, Peter. If it's physically, nobody can take you from me. But Peter, what I'm seeing is beyond physical. Pray. He said, no, no. He was sleeping. So when the hour of temptation came, he saw his monger. You are among them. He said, ah, no, I don't, I don't know Jesus. I don't know Jesus. You are thinking that it was a physical denial. But Jesus already saw it. The whole thing was that Satan has desired you to see you. It was his desire to have you that caused what happened in the physical. But the question is, was it only Peter? Amen. Was it only Peter that was available? To be tempted. Why did you choose Peter? In Matthew 16, 18, it was Peter that Jesus looked at and said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this thing to you. So because it revealed to you, thou art Simon. And upon this mountain of the revelation you have contacted, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then say, I give to you the keys of the kingdom. When Jesus said that Satan heard it, ah! So this guy is carrying a key. This guy is then let's go in that direction. Amen. When Moses was to be born, did you realize that Pharaoh started killing all the young, all the boys? Why? There was a signal that there was a man of destiny that was coming up. He said, start killing them until we, we kill that one. You thought it was a mistake. What about Jesus? When he was born, there was a star. It was not only angels that saw the star, not only shepherds that saw the star. Are you hearing me? The star was up there. And they began to trace the star began to trace the star and because of that star they wasted all the children from two years downward to get that one child listen to me the devil pays prices to get anyone he thinks is a precious soul to god many of us are not aware this thing is spiritual please rise upon your feet over my life over my life listen to me beloved every time you come on down you drop pressure 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 is on you to take a wrong financial step i want you to know that there's a spirituality attached to it if you will you will begin to see the weapons of warfare if you will take out time and you will begin to address that demon behind the pressure it will lift and you'll be wondering where did it go to the pressure will disappear that time of your life where you begin to feel unusually desiring a boy unusually desiring a lady you don't know we are talking reality here you are a young man you are not married but you just know there's one season unusually you are just attracted to girls in an unusual way unusually you just feel like there is something about you that is desiring something you must know that it is not biology that is happening to you it's a
spiritual projection. They have asked a question, who is going to cause this person to fall? Lie say, I cannot succeed. Uh, you understand? Still he say, he does not steal, we cannot succeed. The immorality say, once in a while I used to watch some movies where girls are naked and I think there is, an, there is a weakness there. Sponsor me to go. I, I, are you hearing what I'm talking about? So you put on your phone a picture of this and you don't know that something is moving the person that sent the picture. Something is moving the person that sent the picture. The person don't, doesn't even know why she sent the picture. It might even look like a mistake, but it was not a mistake. It was not a mistake. It was a calculated attempt to destroy you. Aya, do you know some friends that come into your life are projected? How can we get this person? Only by friendship and association. Listen to me, my friends are very few. Are you hearing me? Very, very few. And I am deliberate about, very, very deliberate about that. Very, very few. And even at that, there are boundaries. Are you hearing me? There are boundaries you cross. And I swear they didn't get better with people. To, with me and you together. They didn't give back to us together. On your way, let me be on my way. There are boundaries you cross. The Yama go so Are you aware? Let me say, there are church members that said evangelists didn't bring them. Prayer didn't bring them. Said and brought them to church. Ay, 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 ay. All they are looking for is how to penetrate the man so that the work can be counseled. The person can be in church for two years, three years, and is strategizing. How am I going to get this thing done? And he's watching. Where is the weakness of this man? All of a sudden, they see that the man slaps his wife. They say, correct. We know where to get this man now. And he's careless, moving about, jumping, claiming prophet, claiming apostle. He doesn't know there's a prize on his head. This thing is spiritual. Can you lift up your voice? Amane koso kali atamanaita. Enable I don't know how you want to pray this prayer. But I think we have just about five minutes, seven minutes, ten minutes to pray before we take the communion. It's a warp year. It's a warp year message. So I want you to pray. I want you to pray. of your life there are projections God's man at Father Lord Dr. Paul was talking about a man of God that was well known in this nation named withheld doing powerfully well powerfully well all of a sudden he stood up one day and said God said he should relocate the church the headquarters he relocated everything dried up to now go back and say I made a mistake for where that was how he dried up. He's still alive until now. But his address is nowhere to be found. This thing is, can I tell? I was going to do handover somewhere as an executive on campus. We were to hand over, and a young man that even evangelism, it he was evangelism, he said, but he will not come for evangelism. Everything we did, he never came. When it was time to hand over. The young man was praying to take over from me because he's elderly in the fellowship. So you didn't serve. Don't even dream about it. You know what? The young man began to project. I hope you understand spiritual things. But you see, there is maturity in the spirit. One time I saw him live in a vision. And something like hand over to this one now in the spirit. And my spirit kind of said, No, this is not the person. This is the way. That same night, I came out from the room around 2, 3 a.m. to walk around the campus to pray. And I saw the young man in one corner doing prayer. You know, if you understand spiritual realm, it's not necessarily witchcraft. Somebody can be projected into your dream. You thought it was God. When 
house in my final year. Oh. Some elderly people gathered. They say, Cornelius, we have realized that since our hundred level, elderly people, you know when you are 50 years old, 52, in your class, mamas and papas, so they called me. I respect them, so I went. Say, ah, Cornelius, you are intelligent, you are a man of God, you are doing well. Um, but this area we don't. Since hundred level, we have not, we have not seen you in any relationship. Then again, he said, but we have done an investigation. They say, came in the class. I say, wow. He said, well, I'm investigation from your village. And I wasn't even aware. I said, ah, you investigated? He said, ah, that, nothing is wrong, guy. She's a good girl. And the lady was a fellowship sister too. My mind had never gone there. So they measured, I said, no, no, forget it, I left. You know what happened? One month, two months later, I was sitting down in my sitting room. I traveled at home and I was sitting down. And I had a, a clear trance. It was not a dream. It was not I slept and I saw. I mean life, trans, clear. And I saw the lady was presented to me and the voice said, this is your wife. In a trans. Then, as I looked at her, all of a sudden something rose from my spirit. And I prayed in tongues and I said, this cannot be it. Physically nothing is wrong with her. I've never seen anything wrong with her. Very decent, wonderful girl. But you see, the devil knows if we can if we can project something into his marital destiny, we can stop him. We have not been able to stop him in immorality, but we can position a wrong wife. If we can marry her, then we, are, we can enter him. I said, no way. I began to pray. I said, Lord, something is wrong. It was a trance I saw. And when I said, you know, I'm careful with some things, but in years to come, I'll begin to share things with you. You will understand the level to which I encounter God. Amen. By the mercy of God, my wife can know just some dimension of it. I have drastic, strange encounters in my work with God that I'm not sharing now, but in years to come, I will share. It was real, but the spirit behind was wrong. Was it not a familiar spirit that was saying, These are the men of God teaching us the way of God? Yet it was a demon spirit that was inside again. Age demons also appear in age, as agents of light, sir. Agents of light. You saw it in a dream, it's not enough. You have to be a warrior not to make mistakes. I began to pray. And warriors don't rush. I began to pray. I went to my control power. Father, demystify this thing. Demystify it. What is it that I'm seeing? What happened? I began to pray and 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 pray. And one morning I was praying and I had the voice of God. He said, Favor is deceitful. Beauty is fair. A woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. I said, Wow, is that all you are saying? God said, That is yes. On that one week, I don't know what happened. God arranged a situation whereby something happened and I was standing afar and I saw the lady talking to somebody and I heard her tell a lie she lied to the person and immediately she lied I was just standing the voice came back audibly favor is deceitful beauty is vain the woman that feared the law she shall be praised that was how God delivered me from that one I need to start sharing some of these things so you understand some of us have if the devil knows that as a lady for example the devil knows that you are too giving to God said God said God said God said I should wear this one God said I should wear high heel today God said I should wear yellow scarf today God and you make God to look as if God does not have work when the devil knows that that is your 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 propensity that's what you are teaching to us huh? that will be the avenue through which it will pass so even though it looks spiritual yet you are going down are you hearing me? Pray. Let's let's close this service. This month, I want you to contact a warrior spirit. I, are you a warrior spirit? This piece of spiritual. It's a, it's a projection from the pit of hell. Can you pray? Every negative projection from the pit of hell, I fire you back. I fire you back to wherever you are coming from. Can you pray? Can you pray? Five minutes. Five minutes. Let's pray. Five minutes. Let's pray. Hey, I my life. Let all you be praised. The 
We are not afraid of the incantation. No. The issue we have is that it is where the armor is broken that they penetrate. So if the armor is not broken, nothing can be projected negatively. There will be strength in your spirit to knock it off. Somebody will begin to have a dream consistently. See himself slapping his wife. He has never done it physically, but in the dream, he begins to have that kind of dream. Once in two weeks, once in three weeks, he's slapping her. She's spoken there, he slapped her. The thing continues in the dream for a while. Until unknown to him, it programs something inside of him. But one day before he knows what's happening, he has slapped the woman. A projection. A projection. Sleep in the night. A man or a woman, you are messing up in the dream of the night. The sexual stops continuously. The moment is they start becoming continuous. Know that there's an agenda somewhere. Because in the physical, defenses will begin to fall. Each time it happens in the spiritual and the physical, defenses will fall. Defenses will fall. Defenses will fall until every will be able to penetrate. The communion are thing today, I want you to pray. Anything that has been projected already, already, because I see war. The war I see is not the war of God. Forget Ukraine and Russia. Divine intervention will happen there. The real war is not that one. No. The war I am saying is that people that God has sounded concerning their lives, Satan is launching on them now. And those who will overcome shall obtain the crown. As I take this communion, anything that is already working, projected in my life negatively, let it die. Let, let it die completely, completely. Any area of my life where there is an opening that the devil can come in, today let the blood of Jesus intervene. Can you pray that prayer? Can you pray that prayer? Will you pray that prayer and let it come from the depth of your heart? Can you pray that prayer and let it come from the depth of your heart? As I partake of the communion today,
I decree every loophole in your armory. Let the blood of Jesus intervene tonight. Amen. Let the blood of Jesus intervene tonight. Amen. The enemy will not rejoice over your life. Amen. The enemy will not rejoice over your life. Amen. The wicked ones will never rejoice over your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In this war, your back will not be found on the floor. Amen. I decree you will not crash. Amen. I decree you will not fail. Amen. I decree you will not falter. Amen. I decree you will not crash. Amen. I decree you will not fail. Amen. I decree you will not falter. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. In a minute, as you take the communion, you are here, you need to give your life to Jesus, whether in this auditorium or watching on the internet. It is time to do so now. This thing is a spiritual matter. You can continue to play with your life. You can continue to play with your destiny. Jesus wants to take a central place in your life to help you. You cannot help yourself. Anywhere you are in this auditorium, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to walk out from sin and from Satan. And I want to serve God for the rest of my life. I don't want to be a casualty, a victim of this war. Pastor, I don't want to waste my life. I need the help of God. Wherever you are in this congregation, place your right hand on your chest. I'm going to pray with you right now. Don't be ashamed of anybody. Wherever you are, place your right hand on your chest. I want to pray with you right now. It's an opportunity for you to come to Jesus. I can't want to flee. One. Amina mina le mika mina nigele manina mayena la basata. Two. I'm free. You place your right on your chest. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I come to you. Save me. Wash me clean by your precious blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Jesus, have mercy on me. Deliver me from sin and from Satan to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me in Jesus' name. I pray with you if you pray that prayer. The grace and the blessings of God be upon you in Jesus' name. The grace that sustains and keeps you standing strong is released in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Communion is coming. This if you pray that prayer, our pastors and officers are around you there. Notify and they will pray with you while you are there on your seat. God bless you. If you pray that prayer, just ensure you let them know. Amen. Go for the communion. Sit down. Take the communion. Pray brutally. Pray brutally. We're in the world facing. We're in the world facing. Pray brutally.